Hello and nice to have you join us again on the program Conversations. My name is Elizabeth Abai. I'm always cheerful when I sit here because I know it is time again for all of us to learn something and of course for you and I to be heard because the iPad is sitting here meaning that you'll be communicating with us. Now today is exceptionally, uh, exceptionally good for me because I have people you know in certain quarters I want to say they're my age mates. Yes because I look forward to being like them. Call them you know, elderly statesmen, you won't be wrong. Senior citizens, you won't be wrong. Our fathers, you won't be wrong. We are all here seated to talk about what we started last week. That's uh, Care for the Elderly, part two. Now, in life, it is said, there is time for everything. Every single person was born. Every single person will die sometime. But how you live on and uh, get to that ripe old age, it's very imperative. So that's why we are hammering on this. We'll be tilting more towards the health angle. So that also explains why we have um, uh, two medical people seated with us who will be helping us, you know, get all that we need to know. I talked to my brain. So I keep quiet and let you introduce yourselves. My name is Distinguished Senator Eze Ajoko. I am the president of the Coalition of Societies for the Rights of Older Persons in Nigeria, a coalition of over 80 <coughs> NGOs, CSOs, retirement groups that have become the voice of older persons and care for the older persons in all the states of Nigeria. All right, that's good to know. And I know that not too long ago you have a, you had a football match. We'll try to play back that football match. And um, I wish my director would actually pick at the particular place where you were trying to kick the ball and you fell down. And I was very happy because the woman rescued you. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, my name is Edem Alaofisoye. I'm a medical consultant and yeah. uh, the medical director of Cardiac Care Multi-Specialty Hospital. I'm also a global health scientist. Uh, as well okay i call you the stroke doctor not that you give stroke but you take care of it yes I and uh, Izu, i know you very well let me just let me let you do your introduction i'm dr mrs Izuwa doris i'm the clinical director of our lady of guadalupe health foundation and autism center special needs care okay so daddy i am so i don't to do a, a pharmacist okay i know you're also a writer Yes, I published eight books. Eight books? Wow. 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 On a Including old age. <laughs> Do you have a copy of an old age no, book here? Uh oh, I, 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 I would love to show I would have loved to show it, you know. Alright, we'll get to talk about your books and old age. But for now, let's see. Uh, a lot of times we seem to think when you're old, you cannot do a whole lot of things. But I tell you, I am a gym you know, freak. I go to the gym and I target the very elderly people. I'm always surprised, you know, and ashamed at the same time when the old men or old women beat me hands down. But I'm growing up. Let's see exercises for the elderly.
right age is only a number whatever you become is what you make out of yourself out of for yourself let me see if i can go around Senator, did you exercise today um not this morning because i am coming here okay but you do but that normally i'm a coach oh every you saturday yeah every saturday i coach people who are 50 years and above we have people are up to 82 in our exercise group really on our ngo called graceful aging fellowship graph and hmm. um, we've done that for 12 years and that's why we're celebrating this month our 12 year anniversary of hmm. keeping fit oh that's why at 74 i still have energy to do a lot of things beautiful daddy did you exercise this morning no i didn't do <laughs> i won't ask two of you <laughs> Because I know you are doctors, and I'm sure you almost do that like um, there's nothing else to be done. But sincerely, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised, actually. Doctors oh. tell you what to do. Try and give a doctor medicine, whether he will take it. <laughs> Is that actually true? I I thought you were going to contest. No, it's true. It's the truth. Sometimes we say a lot of things and we find it difficult to do. Like we say, take 30 minutes work every day. Yeah. But because of our busiest enemy, sometimes it's excuse. We say that we are too busy. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be too busy to exercise, mm -hmm. really. Okay. You, do you support that? Uh, I absolutely support that. Uh, it can be a struggle for many people actually to create time to exercise. Uh, and it's irrespective of how much knowledge you have about it. You know that it's the right thing to do, but sometimes you can actually still struggle to do it. So I think uh, medical professionals, actually like everybody else, in terms of struggling to create time to do the needful, Okay, but I think it's something we all need to continue working on. Maybe you also add, you know, it could be coaching the doctors and actually making them pay fees when they don't come to your you know, group. But back to the topic, which is aging, I'd like to know, when we talk about aging, they say senior citizens are people who are maybe 60, sometimes even 50, yes. depending on. But last week we established the fact that a lot of people are scared of it. But looking at the two of you, I don't see fear. What are you doing differently? Um, each like you said some time ago is a number mm -hmm. and your attitude to aging determines how you age now if you are conscious of the fact that you are going to get older and there are habits and things you need to carry along in your old age so that they will help you you know because as you get older you begin to suffer from diabetes hypertension all those kind of things and there are things that over time you've had these are good for you if you continue to practice those things you will not be afraid of aging you may be afraid from the financial point of view because not all all older persons are financially up so that they cannot look for themselves. They are worried because they, they know that when they stop working, there are no reserves. One thing about aging, aging is not homogeneous. People are sick in the old age, people are strong in the old age, people are poor in the old age, people are... So it's a complex thing, aging really, but it's all about attitude and how you Towards age. It. Okay, so I'm not going to be speaking about the um, financial gain uh, uh, side of aging. I, I think um, that's also dependent on a lot of variables. I would like to more dwell on the health, especially since I have the privilege of having a, a spot here. You mentioned something about um, you know, diabetes and um, high BP and all of that. All that the doctors will get to speak on it. But let me go back to Daddy here with us. You know, um, you are very happy. I wish my camera actually captured you when you were walking in. I saw one very elegant lady, you know, by your side with her punk, you know, and looking very trendy. And I asked, who is this? He says, your wife. I was jealous, you know. So I, it, 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 that's a, for me a, something to look forward to. I know she's watching where she is now uh, to see you. So what has made your aging sweet? Well, um, I'm 75 and my father is still living at 103 yep. years. Your father is still there? Living. You guys are My mother is 103. Your mother is also alive. 103. Please, you guys will share the secret. I will share it. I will share it. <laughs> so, 
as far as old age is concerned, the feeding is very important. You know, people of old age, they do it on natural food. Mm. Like cocoa yam, they leave the yam. Mm. Native beans, which people nowadays don't eat. In fact, most people now don't know what cocoa yam is. They have never tested it. I so the it. feeding is very important. So that you don't have anything like a cholesterol, high cholesterol, or, or high BP or diabetes. Mm. My dad does not suffer from any of this. No wow. diabetes, no, no wow. blood, high blood pressure. Wow. He only has impairment of eye due to old age. Mm. And he's very strong. In fact, he stopped driving a car at the age of 92 years. He's alive. He was 92, first, he was still driving? Yes, he was. Well, we forced him to stop. Because wow. if anything could happen to him, they bl start blaming us. And when I told him that it's unlawful for him to drive at the age of 92, he told me that he does not fear the law, that he only fear the church. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. He <laughs> attends all functions now. Wow, awesome. interesting. Interesting. 92, driving. Anyway, I'm going to be having my own party at 120, my beach party, I will say. Now, Doctor, I would like you to you know, speak of one of the things he mentioned. He talked about um, high BP and all of that. And I know that one of the biggest issues with aging when it comes to health, that is it. And I know, consequently, it, it you know, leads to what you call cardiac arrest. Am I? I'm not sure, my doctor. Yeah, it can lead to cardiac issues. Okay, so issues. how do we begin? Are there special things you know we should do beyond, like Daddy said, feeding to ensure that as we age, our BP remains that of a baby? Um, yes, there's a lot of things that we should do to protect our health. Particularly the carnivore club parts where the BP falls in. And I'm happy about something you said. You said something about people carrying on LB habits and things that will keep them and sustain them into the age group. So many times it's actually better to start many of those things even at a younger age. So that it's already part of you that's living a healthy lifestyle. Younger age? Like what age? Sincerely, there's no age that is too healthy. Okay, because there was somebody I was talking to, he said, Leave me alone, I'm an adolescent. Let me enjoy my life. That's a perception that many people tend to have, but the truth is that yes, we try to draw, draw lines at 60 or 65, but when does when do we actually start to get older? It's a continuum, that's the truth. And then from the time you start to get aware of yourself, 20s, 30s, 40s, develop some habits, those habits are the things that now that uh, that is said a single person that he still does those things. He didn't start at he didn't start at 70. I started before and I was able to continue into that. So those things are things that we should actually start as early as possible in life and then we sustain, we continue and it's actually easier to continue. It's a bit harder to start at an older age. Of course for people that have not started, we do encourage them to start now. So apart from eating a healthy diet, things like regular exercise which you mentioned, of course should be age appropriate and then some people may need supervision in starting is important. Uh, having a non-stressful lifestyle, lifestyle that's a lifestyle which is stress and which is controlled, uh, staying clear of certain substances that can increase our chance of having high blood pressure, as things like alcohol, excessive salt intake, I think those are all little little things that can reduce someone's chance of having hypertension in our older age. Okay, so I know... If you allow me to complete yeah. what he said, um, I actually started at 69. To work out? Yes, serious workout after secondary school games and all that. Because I've been diabetic all from 40, mm. and I was having a lot of complications. And once I went to see a doctor in 2009, and he said, Senator, what you need is a lifestyle change, mm -hmm. without which you cannot perfectly recover from my mm. current situation, because one week I'm up and down and up and down. And I asked him, I said, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. I can imagine at that age, I didn't know what a lifestyle change, change. meant. And I said, what, is, what does that mean? He talked about my food. He talked about ex ex exercise. Back to what Daddy said, food. Yes, he talked about exercise and the spirituality aspect of it. I said, fine. On the spirituality aspect, I'm okay. But on the food, you have to talk to my wife because whatever my wife sets on the table <laughs> is what I eat. I'm serious. 
And I said, wait, I'm going to go and get my wife. So I went home, brought my wife. Seriously? Seriously. And the doctor spoke to my wife, told him what I should be eating. At that time, it was a time when a diet type called Hallelujah Diet was coming out, yeah. which requires you to eat uncooked food, yeah. you know, and then only one cooked food in a day. And um, my wife embarked on it. And then I went out to look for a coach, somebody who come to my house three times a week, as the doctors recommend, you know, exercise three days. And I was paying him, it was a, I was exercising with him. And then that's how my NGO was perfect. Mm -hmm. When I now started feeling very well doing all of these things, mm -hmm. I felt God was saying, what you have learned, teach your age mates. Yes. And then that made me call all those who were 50 years and above, because at that time I was 62, and there were not many 62-year-old in my church. So I called all the people who were 50, and there were about 35 of us, and we started. And since then, that's how I moved. So you can get into a healthy lifestyle at any age. Now what has happened is that while we continued, we now found, because we bring doctors every last Saturday of the month to talk to us about health. And when the doctors come, we now realize that what they were talking to us about will benefit the younger ones more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we are now doing maintenance. Those younger ones should do preventive. So I like that. Did you hear that? They are doing maintenance. Yes, that's what we are doing okay. at this age. Maintenance. <laughs> we are maintaining the body. Okay? Consolidating it. <laughs> yes. So we now had to open our doors to include the younger ones so that they can learn about things. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at things like diabetes, mm -hmm. It could run in the family. Okay, my father was diabetic. Mm -hmm. He was hypertensive. Mm -hmm. Julian had uh, diabetic and hypertensive, but my brothers and sisters, some are not. All right, so we had to start teaching them, and from that, you know, we developed a lifestyle that has helped every one of us. So, like you were saying, you could start it at you at, at when you are younger, or you can start it at any age. A lifestyle change is necessary. And that's how we are teaching older persons now to live right so that they will minimize the health condition they are going through. It's beautiful. Let me add to what okay. Senator said because, you know, just like you mentioned hypertension, there are a lot of things that can cause hypertension and it's a progressive uh, thing. Stress can cause hypertension. That is why even the elderly need psychologists, but you start early to help yourself if you don't have a psychologist. How do you reduce stress? And what brings up stress when you think about the future, the retirement, who will take care of you? Do you have kids that will look after you? How do you help with your finances? And I mean, your friends are no longer there. So you start early to improve your mental health capacity. You don't just sit back at home. You can continue reading. You can continue writing. You can continue working like Senator is doing, but maybe in a lower the way you might reduce the frequency and how stressful it is you can do cross puzzles words you can watch television anything that will make you happy so you start early actually to plan for old age so you can reduce the stress that could lead to hypertension you know the more you get the, the older you get the more wears and tears of your nerve cells your blood blood vessels become i mean you can't help that so you have to improve on it to help yourself beautiful i'm going to still be on you for a while and the reason is um a lot of times um I, we are told that it's not that easy to manage the elderly and the books your kind of books also said that the older you get the more uh, you become like the very young that's yes. the toddler mm -hmm. in attitude and those who are in middle age may not find that easy to handle now, you have been blessed with an aged father who is sitting here with you, aged mother, aged grandfather. How do you manage them? First of all, I'm blessed. I thank God because it would have been difficult without them because they still cancel me, they still talk to me. Really? Yes, they do. do. They still spank you. <laughs> they do, but sometimes they will get on your nerves. I know. They get on your nerves. I know. No, please don't do that. Maybe I, I want to have you. cook or drink so they said, it's not good for you, it's not good for you. Or, oh, you're eating too much carb. Or, you know, they tell you all those good things, you know, although you don't want to hear it. 
but I've been blessed. How I manage them? I need you to stress that they tell you the good things, although you don't want to hear it. Yes, okay. they do. They will still tell you all those good things. Oh, why are you coming back? You're working too hard. Rest a little bit. Yes, but what I do is I try to look at them as children my own children do you understand although they are my my parents, parents. Mm -hmm. and if i need to intervene in any discussion i wouldn't cite anybody so i will listen to that and i'll talk to him and i'll listen to, because smart. if you listen so most of the the altercations they don't really have basis <laughs> yes <laughs> So, but you have to talk to them, make sure they eat right, provide their food, make sure they eat right, they go to sleep early, encourage them to be active. Mm -hmm. Like grandma, every morning she still wakes up to go around the compound to look at her small farm. She will street. not stop that. Mm -hmm. And you talk to them, they want somebody to listen to them. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so you listen to them, you encourage them. That psychological well-being that I have my family, my family, the environmental factors they're around. They make so much phone calls, so make sure they have data and they want to Oh, they make a lot of phone calls. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. So oh. you have to make sure they have data to talk to their loved ones. It Daddy, keeps she's them just going. addressing you in public. Okay. Yes. How are you taking it? I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to just make them feel comfortable and happy. It's very important. Listen yes. to them. Don't say you're too busy to listen to your grandparents or to your parents. Yes, it's very, very important. It's important and make sure the grandkids also see them as their grandparents and they listen to them as well. Beautiful. Bring them together. Beautiful. Now, when you talked about um, you know, stroke and all of that, I went um, a little bit down memory lane a little bit. Uh, someone I know who told me that he began to take uh, baby aspirin or something. Mm, you know, five milligrams. Uh, I don't know the, this thing, mm -hmm. you know, but I just recalled the name. He said baby aspirin, you know, from age of, uh, is it 35 or 40? Because he knows it's in your family, mother, yeah. father and all of that. Yes. Can you speak on that medication part, you know, for preventive measures? Um, yeah, so there are a lot of medications that can help us reduce the risk of a stroke. Mm. Um, medications, appropriate medications, blood pressure medications when they are needed, diabetes medications when they are needed, cholesterol medications when they are needed, and then baby aspirin when they are needed. So baby aspirin... So when you say needed, who is who needs, needs to take it, it okay. and why? Yeah, so that's mm. the a bit more debatable part. Mm. There are two levels of prevention we talk about in medicine. We talk about the primary prevention and secondary prevention. Primary is when nothing has happened yet. Okay. okay, but secondary is when something has happened yet. I want to prevent maybe or perhaps worsening. So for baby aspirin, for people that have established either they've had a stroke or a minor or a partial stroke before, we call it TIA, or they've had heart attack or uh, demonstrated blockages in their blood vessels, or people that have established artery disease. For those ones, it is clear cut that aspirin is beneficial for them. That's baby aspirin taken daily. Now, for people that have not had these things yet, the benefit is less clear cut. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, some select people will benefit from it. People who have a higher risk, so to say, uh, and the things that make uh, increases the risk are things like diabetes, hypertension, certain age, and the older, the higher the risk, and of course, smoking status, family history as well. So, uh, there are some risk calculators that we used to try to estimate prior to maybe three years ago. Uh, a lot of people were on baby aspirin, but the research that has been out in the last couple of years mm. informed us that perhaps more people are on the baby aspirin than we need to, than okay. should be on. Okay. okay, but in terms of benefits, it is there. Uh, in some people, it's marginal. Okay, but we are weighing the risk of other adverse effects from baby aspirin. So I think uh, most people what I just recommend is that. People should ask their doctor whether they should be on the baby aspirin or not. Oh, not. And then if they should be on it, the doctor will make the recommendation that's, appropriately. That's, that's beautiful. Now, um, I will still get back to you because I asked you how are you taking your daughter, you know, talking about um, you and her, you know, right here, and you say you're taking it. Now, I know that a lot of times, just like babies, I recall when my children were small, one of them would get up and say, Mommy, I want to cry. And I say, Cry, and I thought it was a joke. She actually shifted her side and cried like one hour. She kept quiet. I said, are you okay? She said, yes. Then come back. I also know that the elderly sometimes just feel that trigger. You know, when it comes, you're lucky you have a, a medical practitioner who also is a specialist when it comes to special care or special needs. How do you on your own try to not get on people's nerves? Because I want other people who are elderly listening to us to be able to cope. 
there are times you are tempted to do things and you're like, okay, it's not about me. How do you, what do you use to bring yourself back to ensure that you're on the right path? There's what we call old age of lamentation. Old age of lamentation. It yes. sounds like Bible quotes. That is when somebody has invested all he has on the children. Oh, okay. And, and eventually he leaves nothing. Oh. The children cannot oh. give all the daughter have. Name what that called habit, not habit, is nothing. Uh. The, the man is expecting to get something uh. for what he has invested and he doesn't get it. You see, most of the time he's lamenting, crying, saddened, agonized. Sure. Just like a uh, uh, Wolsey in the, in the 15th century, where he served the Harry VIII and he was thrown out and he played with the Cromwell and he said, if I have served my God as diligently as I, as I have served my master, he would not have told me where my grave is. You see, it also happens to the government. When someone serves the government and the pension is not paid, all these things aggravate the sadness of man and the man reacts negatively. Mm -hmm. You see, people go and file up under the seat of the sun. At the end, no payment. Mm -mm. My father is receiving 4,000 naira a month for his pension. 4,000 naira? 4,000 naira. Where did, he, where did he work? He had been a teacher for 44 years. He started teaching in 1945 mm. in, in Imo State. You see? Does he receive it monthly? He's still receiving the 4,000. No, nobody pays their money. Nobody pays. Them. Nobody pays. Well, that is what is due to him 4,000 naira a month. But however, he has good children, good grandchildren, good great grandchildren. So he's not feeling it. So these are the things that make a man happy. He enjoys old age. Okay. As, you know, um, can, as can I chip in? Please. You know, a lot of times, people are not very observant when older persons die. I teach mental health. Mental health is what goes on in your mind that creates other sadness or happiness in your environment reaction. Mm. And you've watched that when most older persons die, they are refusing food. They don't want to talk to you. A lot of people do not understand that what they are going through is depression. Mm. When they are not talking to you, they are not eating. It is not time to say, eh, that, that if you want to eat or not. Mom, it what you want to eat or not. It is a time for you to probe mm -hmm. and find out what the issues are. Definitely. Because that person, as he gets depressed, he gives up on life mm. and he just died. When you see, they say they are they're organizing their things, they are, you know, he's not talking to anybody. He's depressed. Mm -hmm. And you've got to probe and find out what is the cause of this depression. A lot of people go through depression without understanding what it, that they are in depressed mood. Mm -hmm. You know, so I want to encourage people who are looking after older persons to always be observant when they start sliding into a depression mood so that they can bring them out. Find out what they like best. They may be depressed because when my mother gets depressed, it's because of one child or the other and the other. And all I do when I find it, I say, okay, mommy, don't worry, I'll solve the problem. She will pick up from there. Hmm. If it is because she needs money, I will send more than she needs. You see her brighten up again. She's 103 like his uh, father. Mm -hmm. You know, your father is 103, my mother is 103. They should be talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Are you much making someone? Uh, don't worry, you know, I'll, I'll find out where you live. So that we can talk. <laughs> All right, so, but the point I'm making is that mental health is very important in dealing with the issues of older persons. Mm -hmm. You have labor, like he said, and government is not paying your pension. Mm -hmm. Your children are not looking after you. Recently, we premiered in Cost Ropin a film on the older persons. Mm -hmm. You know, how older persons get abandoned by their children. And I think we use this opportunity to appeal to all children to please remember their parents wherever they are. He talked about credit. Isolation is one thing that kills older persons. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they need to interact. They need to call anybody they remember. Mm -hmm. Load their phone with credit. Mm -hmm. During the COVID, a coalition of societies for the right of older person were sending credits to anybody we knew was an old person. He didn't send to me. <laughs> you, are not, you are not in that category, but you are only assuming you are. Don't worry, you will get there. All right? So we send them credits so that they can talk to someone. 
you know? Can you imagine that you are busy all day? Now think of the old man. He's only 75. Only because I'm 74, so he's not too far from me. <laughs> this is okay. but, uh, but somebody who is 60 would say that we are old. I don't see myself as old since my mother is still alive. Yes. You know, all right. So, see, I don't have a mother alive, so I'm older. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is that you are busy all day. What is the old man doing at home? He's sitting and looking. And his mind is running up and down, up and down, to happiness, to sadness, to issues, to problems. That's why they need to interact. That's why they need to communicate and talk. You say, Mama, you are talking too much. What do you want Mama to do? You are busy. Mm -hmm. Mama is idle. She has to talk too much <laughs> to losing all the issues yes. that are bugging her. Yeah. So in the care of the older persons, everybody has to be careful how to manage them. Okay. They are not only behaving like children, but they have issues. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, they are no longer being listened to. You know, I call the shots now in my family. Can you imagine when I get old and my children don't even listen to me again? Right now, I tell them what to do. Now, they are getting, they are all old. They don't listen to me. And I give instructions, nobody obeys it. What do you think will be going on in my mind? Wow. That I'm now useless. That's why, in the care of older persons, you need to do a lot to be able to help them to age gracefully. Beautiful. I like that. Now, you have talked about understanding them and management. I want to dwell a little bit uh, with uh, our medical people here and get to find out. First, for you, he mentioned something. We can easily, you know, fall into depression. What is the telltale sign beyond the one he's mentioned that I can notice and say, okay, aha. Uh -huh. This is what is happening to mama or papa and what is my first step okay um when when you, uh, uh, of course you already know your, your parents mm -hmm. and when they are no longer the way they used to be maybe someone that used to talk a lot and is now quiet you know that something is bothering her and you're in the family this is for everybody you're in the family you know there is a problem in the family maybe not with you or maybe a sibling par parents elderly people grandparents they will think oh my god they will think about every child that they have so you can help by talking about it open conversation because when you talk about something you feel better so when they are withdrawn into themselves they're no longer doing the act they're no longer eating mm -hmm. they are sluggish in what they are doing their bp is going up complaining about headache forgetting things also you need to act very very fast for example, you know we're talking about stroke. There's this um, acronym FAST. You FAST. FAST. Okay. F-A-S-T. FAST. Mm -hmm. The face. Is the face deviating to one side? Okay. 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 Like yeah, you look, yes, when it's going to one side. Where you notice it. Yes, when you notice it, the A, arm. Mm -hmm. Can the person, can your mother, your father raise two hands to get up? Comfortably. Yes, comfortably okay. and leave it there. Then the S, the smile. Can they smile and it's still the same face? Or is it dragged to one side and then you have to t you have to immediately call somebody and act very fast mm -hmm. especially if they have other people staying with them so sometimes we leave our grandparents in the village they mm -hmm. don't have anybody maybe just a small guest staying with them and then before you know it they said the person is dead due to mm -hmm. old age something must have caused it maybe the person is not even eating right hunger poverty no health care as he is, he has to check his blood pressure and um, his fasting blood sugar almost every two days. Is anybody doing that for them? Mm -hmm. Well, they have a lot of underlying diseases, like I said, due to wears and tears of the body. Mm -hmm. Who can they see? Blindness, you know, cataracts. So mm -hmm. the person can go and fall. And if they have diabetes, it will start. The injury might find it. They might find it. The, the process of healing is very sluggish. Yeah. So all these telltale signs are what will tell us our grandparents our parents they need medical care immediately all right talk to um how regularly should uh, the elderly visit the clinic okay. i know sometimes there's something you guys call annual uh, checkup check is it the same annual or uh, biannual i don't know and what should uh, they be asking exactly. to be checked okay um i would like to first of all just chip a little bit about the depression talk that we talked about and what i want to add is that apart from the symptoms she did mention sometimes poor sleep can be an abinga poor sleep yeah and okay. then they can be having 
more and more physical symptoms than they used to. Mm -hmm. So the knee pain that appears to have been stable or some shoulder pain that appears to have been at this level for so so years, you just keep complaining about it on and on and on. And part of the uh, part of the triggers or things that contribute to it, we've mentioned most of the key things, but sometimes we they feel as though they're a burden to us. So we should refrain from making statements or giving attitudes that make our parents or our elderly people feel a burden because by the time they just see that, oh, maybe my son had to spend so much on me or he reacted like this when I asked also, so they will just withdraw into their shell and they may even start getting weepy and kept and crying. So uh, we should watch out for those things as well. In terms of the frequency of the medical checkups that we recommend for elderly, uh, there's no blanket level that we can say because it depends on how ill and how frail the person is. So frailty and comorbidities that they have. But generally, generally speaking, one to two yearly may be appropriate for even the most healthy person. For that's a full checkup, and of course, every elderly person should have a doctor that checks on him or her from time to time because mm -hmm. almost inevitably there will be minor ailments, mm -hmm. joint pains, um, here and there things, teeth issues. So at least, but a full evaluation, maybe every one to two years, have their eyes checked, have their tooth checked, their heart, their kidneys. So those annual checkups or biannual checkups will be will be appropriate for them. All right, thank you very much. There's a question here. I one is for you, Daddy. One is for the senator. Let me quickly take one. Someone says here, uh, please, is a uh, good sports advisable for people above eighty? And I'll let you handle that because I know if the director is actually with us, uh, he should be able to play that clip I already made, you know, just off somehow earlier on. You know, I found it funny where the senator was playing football and fell down. So. <laughs> Talk to us about the 80s in your group. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's necessary for everybody, everybody, all ages, to do one form or the other of an exercise. Now, when you have about 80, there are some exercises you should not try to do. Okay. You know, because you know your frame or your spinal system can be hot depending on what you do. Mm. So you will do marginal exercises that allows you to move your hand, move your legs, you know, twist your head and all that. Do things that will give you basic. Unlike an, a younger person who goes to the gym to run on the treadmill or, you know, is uh, skipping rope and playing tennis and all that. But if somebody has been doing them all life, Mm -hmm. and you can carry them into old age until and then now do them slowly, slowly because yes. your energy level is less i notice you guys also had dancing sessions. yes we, yeah. we we do all sorts of things you okay. know in our group and um, we find that our older people just take their time our rule number one is do what you can do rule number two is uh, don't do everything we do so we make sure that you are exercising but you are not doing things that you are not supposed to do that may hurt you okay uh, when you do all these exercises in your group uh, like the dancing yeah there's a golf there's one yes. woman i watched in the golf and yes. i noticed the way she put in the ball it yes. was really good yeah so i also noticed that you had um gifts given yes you know do you also do these sporting events in uh, competitive I mean, like the golf, the dance, the football, is it competitive? Yes, what we've started now under the Coalition of Societies for the Right of Older Persons is senior citizen games. Okay. People like me, people older than me. Daddy is going to join you. <laughs> yeah, he is. We're going to invite him. Okay. We're going to invite him. You know, um, women, men and women playing football, you know, and then we had to go to the IBB International Golf Club and we organize for them, you know, a competition among the veterans, you know, and we we're happy, it's, you know, it's on, it's on the, so how on, just got on the screen. Yes. Okay, so okay. We, we encouraged the veterans to play together. It's mm -hmm. fun when old people play together, mm -hmm. you know, you laugh. After which you give the gifts. Yeah, we give, we give them an award, you know, for those who have done very, very well, you know, and um, for the football, it's it's fun. It's just a woman after the match said, "I'm happy today. I kicked a ball." Oh. <laughs> you know, she nice kicked, you know she kicked the ball once <laughs> in the competition. You know, okay. so what we're trying to do 
in the coalition is to encourage older persons to begin to come out to exercise. You know, there's a feel good uh, hormone mm -hmm. that it, it generates yes. when you do exercise, when you dance, when you sing. That's happy hormone, right? Yes, yes. yes. happy yes. hormone. Yes. You know, you Reduces when stress. when you exercise, you know that day, that time you forget all your problems. Yes. You know, and you will for one week you'll be thinking of how you ran, how you played, how you did and that. And you'll be talking about it on yes, the phone. You'll be, you know? you'll be so happy to talk about it, okay. and that's one of the areas the coalition is thinking that you can improve the quality of life of older persons in Nigeria. And we're asking all states to pick it up, let there be ex senior citizen exercises. Because when senior citizens are not exercising or doing things that young people do, they think their life is over. No, life is not over for them. All right, thank you very much. I thank hope you. this lady or man that it indicates you got the answer you're looking for because he said, if you guys should please help advise my father to get up and exercise. Uh, another person here says, please daddy, tell us more about the kukuyama and other food. <laughs> well, uh, let me help the senator. Okay. He has been talking about uh, those in the township, but not what happens in the village. No, they do fan work. I'm coming, not all of them. <laughs> um, I told him my father stopped driving at the age of 92. Yeah. He was going to the farm. And when I persuaded him to stop farming, he said, hard work does not kill. What kills is worry. That is worry that is killing people. Not hard work. They are very active. Not all of them are active. Yes, right. So they do the village should be encouraged to do this exercise. That's okay. what we're nationally. So somebody, like I said, asked about the kukuyam. What's the benefit for the kukuyam? You know, kukuyam is low grade carbohydrates. Okay. So by taking it, you don't expect that you have diabetes. Oh, beautiful. Yeah? And it is, doesn't contain any fat. No, so no cholesterol. Okay. I want you to chip in something to the exercise that he, he has been talking about so much. And it's, I think it's very critical and very important. Uh, we know that exercise uh, also reduces, improves mental well-being. Uh, so those depression-related issues, even cognitive performance, that is how easily all these memory things, forgetfulness, even dementia start to happen. The exercise minimizes that. And of course, we know that fall is a big issue in the elderly. So people that exercise regularly are more likely to have stronger muscles, better coordinated, and of course, less likely to fall. And we know that uh, fall, by the time we have falls in our elderly, mm -hmm. the chances of that is well. So the benefit of your exercise is actually, actually immense. And I'm actually mm -hmm. impressed that uh, we're able to get this kind of thing going in the elderly group. Uh, and that answer, about that there's no age that exercise is inappropriate is correct okay. everybody nice. should be able to exercise at any age if you just find what is appropriate for that age so they do that and they get their stability able to be more functional for as much as long as possible right let me add to what you okay. said um, about kukuyam you know in the village they they actually eat better than those in township mm -hmm. they go to the farm they get their kukuyam they don't they can use ordinary palm oil pepper that is already in the farm, farm. and small salt unlike here they will bleach their oil mm. and it becomes saturated and crops the vessels and then they have vegetables in the village so they won't just eat the they will make it mm -hmm. porridge mm -hmm. and then they add more vegetables so all these things improves their skin their 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 lifestyle it makes them look healthier and better so sometimes people in the village eat gracefully than some people better in the town us. And of course, they have less polluted uh, yes, environment, environment. The air to breathe in. About 10 years ago, I did a medical outreach in my village. That's my husband's village. I saw Where's, about yeah. Isia Langwa. Okay. I saw about 200 elderly people. Mm -hmm. I was so shocked. Only about five of them, five or ten of them had um, high blood pressure from the measurement. And I said, wow. And you know, they were cycling. Some mm -hmm, of them were mm -hmm, cycling. Mm -hmm. That exercise. Mm -hmm. We don't cycle here. Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised. They might have no, better lifestyle. If you have to go lifestyle. from here to UBA, that is not too far from here, I call it boat. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to cross my road. Yeah. I think their own is more of mental, psychological stress because of finances mm -hmm. and how we take care of them. All right, uh, somebody asked here, the good morning, Senator Eze Ayoko. Please, what do you mean by eating one cooked food a day and raw? Please let me know uh, the food for diabetic uh, side. Okay, briefly. Well, uh, you know that cooked food, when you cook food, you lose all the nutrients. Most mm -hmm. of the, as the most water the is boiling and you see it, the nutrient is going. 
All right. So uh, eating when you are eating raw food, it means that you are eating more of fruits and veggies fruits and vegetable mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. which is healthy which is the b biblical food because when you look at the scriptures for those of us who are Christian you know uh, Genesis 129 God told them to eat the herbs the fruits and all that that it shall be meat to them mm -hmm. so if you are able to eat uh, non-cooked food in the morning and in the noon and you eat one cooked food a day it will reduce the amount of carbohydrate and the amount of you know uh, problems you have as a diabetic all right you know. so i hope you got that and uh, quickly somebody says yeah good morning i'm very happy for all of you and my grandfather is 145 oh wow. My God. wow 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 45 144 he didn't mention his name please you can you send it. your full details so we can locate you all right choma from enugu says i love your program what kind of exercise and even food for someone who has leg uh, k leg and having arthritis all right, low insulin. Thank you. I think I'll let you speak on uh, that briefly. For someone that has joint problems, mm -hmm. particularly the knees, exercise can be a bit difficult. Uh, so the options we have, the underwater for those whom that is acceptable for, is often advocated for people that have joint problems. Uh, just like we showed on the TV earlier, some people staying in filters and swinging their legs in, a, in water. But that's not acceptable for a lot of our people. So sometimes we need to derive other forms of exercise that puts limited impairment of the knees. So that will probably exercise some aerobics that doesn't involve, okay? And then if they are still able to mobilize, just walking can help to the extent to which they can. So I think that's what I recommend. All right, thank you. Let me take a bulk of messages in bulk, then we can quickly uh, comment briefly before our time is up. Is there a senator or is a, uh, this from Amans? Okay, you're a great man. God bless you. I thought you had a message, but God bless you. That's a good message too. Just thanking you all for this conversation. I have benefited a whole lot. Thank you too. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Aja. My father is above 90 years old now and he likes taking something sugary. What should I do about it? <laughs> Just hold that thought. You have to speak to the father in good time. I must sincerely appreciate all the contributors on this uh, today's topic. It's highly educative and challenging. I humbly urge and to advise to devise a means of diversifying a lucrative interactive uh, to, uh, uh, day like today's own may god i don't know what this means so but all the same we'll look at this message again you're giving nt assignments that's uh a call daniel giving my dg assignment we'll look at it all right how do you advise an elderly who loses a son at old age talking about mental health at old age uh, dr doris that's for you and uh, let me take just one more there's so many messages i wish i can i love what you're saying i'm 62 years old today i have learned a whole lesson god bless you god bless senator okay name, let's quickly my name is, is senator um, Eze ajoku ajoku that's the uh, lot of people with similar names yes Eze um, Ayog, um, and Eze Eze ajoku. Ajoku. all right so somebody talked about um, um you know, mental health, health, somebody lost, and you also have your own quickly, just one minute. Okay, or less. mine is uh, somebody that yeah, an lost, a child. Mm -hmm. lost a child. You know, I think that every <clears throat> parents we should be for their children to bury them. Now you're burying your own child is very saddening, especially if it's <coughs> a, ch a child or a son that has been taking care of you, taking care of everyone in the house. You still need to tell, talk to them a lot okay. and c counsel them. Be there for them. Let Just somebody step in into that role. That emotional counseling. Actually being there for them, making sure that they, they don't really lack as much as you can. That All right, that is just quickly you. How do I stop sugary food? Somebody said you should talk to his father. I like sugar too much. Please. One word or two to the father. Well, um you've got the old animals don't change their ways. What will happen is that it can take the some sugar that you can take like uh, a river, you know, you can put it in the pub. Mm. It doesn't contain, it's not a monosaccharide. Mm. Yeah? You can use it, sweetener. Just to... Instead of, yes. Okay, that's a nice one. Doctor, a parting word on the, uh, for the elderly? Uh, I think I'll just encourage everybody that we can do more than we are currently doing <coughs> and uh, uh, focus on a healthy diet, exercise even in the older age and we that we have all that food that we're taking care of, we should create that time and we should have the understanding in being patient with our older ones. We should okay. accommodate them. Thank you. If what I would add is that 
it is good to have good children. It's yes. very, very important. Wow. Dr. Doris, your daddy is really proud of you and your siblings. Because I must that say, is keep where it the majority of the problem is solved. Once thank you have very children, much. They take much more care. They, you'll be well taken care of. Okay. Thank you for doing a good job. And Dr. Just one or two words, I'll just ask you straight up. You like to dance and you like to sing. What do you dance to? What do you sing to? Christian music. Okay. And you rock it? I boogie it. You boogle it. <laughs> that's a nice one. There are a whole lot of messages here. Some of them are quite personal. I'll send them to you after. That's behind the camera. Thank you so much for coming. Uh -huh. And whatever you do, you want to say something? Yes. My director is on my neck, but just one word. Okay, just to make sure that the our elderly people are relevant in our society mm -hmm. and in our homes. Don't keep them by the side. They want to contribute as well. It's important because uh, they say age is wisdom. And that wisdom that comes sometimes as gray hair is something we must tap on to ensure sure that our own lives are better like i always say i'm one person who has the grace of fluctuating i can be 15 today i can be 70 tomorrow it's <laughs> all in the mind i'll see you next week <laughs>